Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. We're here in beautiful Gainesville, Florida, and I'm going to start today with a different message, a message I usually end with. Listen, if you don't work on your projects, they're never going to work, right? So after this video is done, get out of the garage or the tree row, or wherever your project vehicle is, clean it off at least. Get the stuff off the roof. What are you doing? You want to meet? Fire it up. Go through the gears or make a parts list or figure out how to budget for your parts. Just do something. Procrastinate. I ain't gonna get her on the road. You know what I mean? Speaking of project cars, vanishing paint is hurt. We limped in today, it's running on probably six, maybe six and a half. It was not good. We went to dinner last night, everything was fine. Fired it up after dinner. Bad dead miss. It's running terrible. I'm hoping it's just a plug or a nick wire or something like that. But we're gonna have to scramble. We are first today, lanes open in like 11 minutes. That's pretty good, because we just pulled in. We had to stop and get parts this morning. Everything that I thought I might need for vanishing paint here to get it into the lanes. So the Camaro and the Monte Barrow, we're gonna scramble, get in D-Class, try to make a hit. I'm gonna start tearing into this. I'm probably gonna have to run later today during an all pass or something like that, which is unfortunate because we could have been on the road and back to Orlando by like noon, but now it's gonna be another long day. But anyway, that's Dragon Drive. Let's dig in and have some fun. Jessica's hauling quick on changing tires, getting the radials on. And I'm gonna quick try to just put plugs in and see if that resolves the miss. Because if it does, we can maybe try to make a pass. Or if it runs good enough, we could just break the beams. So in this competition, if you can drive your car to the start line and just literally roll through forward and break the beams, even if you back up and exit, you're still in competition. Well, we're in bullseye, so every day they draw a random number. 0 0.39, 0 0.62, 0 0.05, 0 0.22, whatever it is. You can run whatever, point whatever, and get as close to that number as you can without breaking out. As an example, if the number was 0 0.20, we would run, like the vanish and paint, we would wanna run a 12 point whatever, as close as we can to 20. Now vanish and paint won't run a 12.20, so we would wanna slow up and try to run a 13, or a 1321. If you're on a 1305, that's a breakout. And then at the end of the day, they average, even if you broke out or were closer, who's doing better? Chad is actually in fourth right now in the whole class, believe it or not. Um, so long story short, if we wanted to, we could just roll up with the radials on and break the beams, just cruise to the end of the track, take whatever number we can get. We could still then come back and work on this again on the road. We're just gonna start digging into it and see how far we get here. Yeah, it'll probably stick to that. I don't know how. That'll work, yeah. Keith said he didn't want to hurt the paint, so he's I, been. Well, I was worried about setting my cookie on all the paint. Now the can't run from the rib, can't scratch your paint. <laughs> yeah. High quality stuff here. Keith stuck us in quarantine. He likes teasing me. Actual, actually, I just wanted to keep an eye on you and these sketchy guys you brought with you. What the hell? <laughs> I right, know, so right? Let's go do this. Yeah. Make make sure Chad's is crooked on here. This car is too nice. It needs it needs something something wrong with it. Chad, I'm gonna put it right there. You see that? That works. Okay. Before you leave today, you have to get a uh, I survived before a fail. Rest in peace. I don't care. Got another sticker. <laughs> if you are not here, you're brilliant. Yeah. You're here because you're sketchy. I'm sketchy. <laughs> Got best, best case, sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Badass cars in here, then there's just bad people. Here. Bad. bad cars here. So, I, so I'm in the keep the eye on category, basically. I'm yeah. Look at this a little bit. 
Look at that. All right. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll get you another sticker. I survived or fail. Rest in peace. Matters not to me. All right, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> I got to do the fastest sparkulator change in my life really fast. Chad and Heidi are already gone. We tested the two-step on the Monte Carlo. That's dialed in. That's at 2,000. Uh, Jess, you want to run up and try? Okay. okay. I'm going to try to get the wheels are done. Awesome. Great job. So I got to try to get this done and get in the lanes real quick. I'm all about a lonesome. Well, guys, unfortunately, plug change didn't do anything. Something's going on. It's, uh... Definitely got a dead mess. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go jump in the lanes. We're gonna go around the water box, skip the burnout. I don't wanna cause any more damage. We're just gonna ease our way down to the end. Like we're going to the tavern, get a slip. We're gonna turn that slip in. Then we're gonna come back and see if we can figure out what's going on with the actual game here. Trying the two step today and the transferring. Yeah. That's why I didn't want to go beat on it just in case it's valve drain. 
so we're getting the Camaro ready to run in town. We're just adjusting some air pressures and doing some stuff. Chad's gonna run me into the parts store. I'm gonna grab some basic accoutrement stuff I might need, and then we'll tear into this 360 real quick. See what happens. Might also grab some lunch or something. It's already days going so quick when you're in a rush like this. So appreciate these more than the fancy college ones. Are you gonna take over for us? <laughs> <laughs> Jason and the Cowboys. So we were suspecting number six because when I pulled that uh, plug this morning and swapped spark lighters out, it was wet with fuel. And it's not burning, that means. It's getting fuel through the intake, but it's not burning. There's only two reasons that's gonna happen. Ignition, or valve train and well I think we found the culprit I'll show you here so these are normal that's looking fine oh wait yeah that's the push rod through the rocker and this potentially an okay-ish fix we could probably find this, maybe. It's not an aftermarket jobber. Um, change the oil, we got a bunch of metal in the oil, obviously. You can see here, all that metal. But that explains the random break, how we went to supper, everything was fine. It was just wearing itself out during the drive. It's got a pretty high lift cam in it. And then after supper, all of a sudden it just broke, right? So it just finally gave up, popped through. Um, I, I see the cap actually that busted through sitting in the oil, which is great news because we can pluck that out. That means it hasn't gone through the bottom end. It hasn't gone through any mains or rod bearings or anything like that. Oil flush will be done there. We're either gonna try to weld, patch up, use washers, duct tape, JB lube, zip ties or something, or maybe somebody will have an LA just, you know, Chrysler truck rocker in stock and we can make this thing work. Safe. Good. Push rod isn't back. Well, I mean the fender's back. This is rolling along the bent <laughs> fender. So it looks pretty good. Good deal. But uh, I think all we need is a rocker arm. Thankfully the weak point. Apparently, I called Steve Dulcich and chatted with him about this engine because he had a big part building it. You're supposed to carry these in the glove box if you're a Mopar guy. I didn't know that. Well, you're not a Mopar so, guy. So, right. so uh, we got a nice guy. His name's Daniel Anderson. Watches always going to a junkyard for us. He's going to get a box of rocker arms. Oh, that's nice. And we're going to throw them in the glove box that doesn't exist because it's just a hole. So maybe we'll zip tie it in or something. I don't know. Jessica will pick it up. But I think we could swap this out. This isn't bent. Throw it back in. Change the oil quick because we got glitter everywhere. Jessica's got us packed. Throw the roof rack on. Boom, we're on the way to Orlando. I think we're going to the beach today. Did you hear this? What? That's the route. I heard they throw on the beach or something. Did not hear that. Well, hey, but do you remember last night when you're like, hey, we're going to be on the road and have a really awesome sit-down lunch? And I said, no, we won't. I don't remember that. <laughs> so excellent news. Push rod seems to be... Oh. Well, now the push rod was okay. <laughs> um, this end has a couple small Mars in it. It's not terrible. We'll keep this on the rocker side. As long as this side's nice for the lifter spring cup, that's kind of the most important end. I think we're going to be okay. We fish this out. That's the big piece there. That's excellent news. That means we're not pulling the oil pan. So now all we have to worry about is all the glitter in here. So while I'm waiting for this to show back up, we're going to go ahead and drop the oil, change that. I'll try to soak some of this up, get some of the glitter out of here. We can get this off, get this prepped, clean everything up. And then once that shows up, plop this on, bolt it back down, we're ready to go. So we got to look in here. These are offset lifters, right? So you got a right lifter, see that stamping, and a left. Because the push rod is kicked off a little each way. 
Yeah, we're starting to notice some weak points on some of the intake valves. Probably because of the valve spring pressure and the lift of the cam. But overall, it seems like the intake rockers are getting beat up more than anything. So I asked that feller to try to bring a handful or a dozen if you can or a whole rack. And uh, we started looking at the other side. And some of these castings are starting to look really suspect. Like that looks like it's about to punch through. So I just want to have a couple with us just in case we know what to look for now. Yeah, and if we could get this patched up and on the road, at least have a couple extras. So if it happens again, boom, we're ready to go. What you doing? Oh, oh hey. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, this escalated. I went to the restroom and I come back and there's a lot of stuff happening now. So I'm trying to change the oil. I'm waiting for that uh, rocker arm to show up, which you might not know about that. Yet. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So uh, while I'm waiting, I'm trying to change the oil out, get all that done, get that bunt up, start getting the sparkulator hoses back on. So when the other rocker shows up, we can just pluck that on, finish up the drinker side, and we can hit the roads. The goal is easy, to be like, easy. yes, allegedly, allegedly, be packed up, ready to rock. But I don't fit under these. Ugh. Hey, we got parts. So Resurrected Garage went to a junkyard for us and picked up a bunch of rockers to replace this one, and some extra push rods. These look low miles compared to this so I think we're just gonna hit them with some uh, brake parts cleaner throw it in and then we'll throw these in the glove box that doesn't exist which means they'll land on the floor somewhere and carry them with because we've noticed all of the intake rockers like this one are about ready to pop so we're gonna carry some extras with us just in case and uh, bring these with as well, but we're just gonna tie it up so we can get to Orlando, then we can mess with it tomorrow. Cruising, idle, you know, 25, 3500 RPM, yeah, yeah, it'll be all right, the way it is. All right, the new junkyard rocker is in. I did run this push rod there through some scotch right and brake clean just to clean it up. This is the old set here. I'm gonna keep that, I think, for a, some sort of trophy for Gainesville. I am going to try to find a torque wrench, torque these really quick. I'm going to spin it over, no ignition, not running. Just make sure everything looks good. Throw the valve cover on and we're out of here. It's nowhere near spring vine. Looks pretty good, huh? Yeah, I think yeah. it's real good. Tony blessed it. I think we're ready to rock. We'll uh, we'll we'll make sure we do a burnout leaving just to make sure everything is seated. Yeah, just an official break-in procedure. You want to rev it up in neutral and just dump the blood. But if I knock it into gear, excuse me, knock it into gear. Accidentally. Accidentally. Yes. Okay, good to go. Jess, you want to put the valve cover on? Okay, thanks. Well, it is back alive. The bad news is. Very, very noisy. Push rod is either somehow shorter than the eye could see or that lifter is smoked. Chances are the lifter is smoked because this basically got jammed through there. It just is bouncing off of that lifter cup. So that's gotta be damaged at this point. Still has great oil pressure. Basically, we're gonna pretend we don't hear anything, shut the hood, finish packing, and hit the road to Orlando. Well, success, as you can see, Vanishing Pain is back on the road. It's running once again, but we definitely have a ton of valve train noise. Unfortunately, I think that lifter really took a beating, whether it's just, uh, you know, maybe that push rod length was just slightly smaller. I'm not quite sure, to be completely honest, but it's firing on all eight, which is the most important thing. This is the fun part about sick week. Adapt, modify, overcome, however you can. In this case, we got junkyard parts out of a truck that hasn't run for probably 30 years. And it's keeping this little 360 alive. Chad made a pass, did really good there. 1146, improved to 60 foot. 1149. 
1149, excuse me. Yep. And uh, tomorrow we plan on turning the two-step up on the Monte Barrow. And uh, we might even lean out the secondaries on Chad's Camaro, because that's what we did today is uh, he pulled a plug and man was it, it was richer than Bill Gates. So uh, I asked him to maybe consider putting in some smaller jets, which he did and instantly picked up there. So we might do that on the secondaries tomorrow. Uh, as far as managing paint, man, we'll have to see what we can run tomorrow with some junkyard parts in this thing. Um, I'm hopeful for the other two cars. We're definitely going to get a PV, but end of day, all we need to do is turn in a slip, make this trip today, and we have success. Yes. We've completed sick week, and that's really the fun of it, the big story. We don't got some race program and a big budget and all it this and that. Yep, come out here, have fun, meet people, yep. enjoy the beautiful weather, man, it's just been gorgeous. I hit my skin, I thought it was welder burn, and then I realized I haven't welded this week. Jessica advised me that the sun could burn your skin. 